Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete 222 with episode 6 of my series entitled What Makes It Work? And in this episode, I'm going to discuss the Chinese windlass. A windlass is nothing more than a hoist. And here we have a, a common windlass. This is not the, the Chinese windlass. This is the kind that you see in fairy tales on a wishing well and so on. And, uh, and it works well enough if you have a large enough crank here to uh, give you leverage. But it has several disadvantages too, and it doesn't have nearly the mechanical advantage of the Chinese windlass. And you simply have a drum at the top with the rope or chain or string attached to it, and a crank here of uh, variable length, whatever uh, length you think you need. And that allows you to wind up the uh, the rope on the drum and hoist the bucket out of the water or out of the well or whatever you're doing and often you see men raising buckets of tar when they're doing roofing but one of the disadvantages here and this is the kind of little windlass that you see in uh, Snow White uh, when she's looking down the wishing well but Snow White's little uh, front teeth would get knocked out if she let it go because it'll do that and that's one of the biggest disadvantages of a simple windlass or hoist. Now let's talk about the Chinese windlass. Now this is the Chinese windlass, sometimes also called a differential windlass. And actually this entire video on the windlass is nothing more than a preparation for the next video that I'm going to do on a differential chain hoist. But for now comments will be strictly on uh, this particular uh, Chinese windlass here and uh, it's just a matter that uh, the rope gets wound onto one drum and it unwinds from the other drum and then there's a movable pulley that's optional that hangs between the two drums and here you're trading distance for weight that's a 500 gram weight there not that it matters but notice here as I'm lowering it that uh, the string got wound up on the small diameter and unwound from the large diameter drum. Watch now as I raise the weight and uh, the string winds up onto the one inch diameter drum and unwinds from the nine hundred thousandths diameter drum. And very little effort is involved in this. Should I stop at any point, the weight is not going to fall, and that's one of the beauties of it. Even if I pull harder on it, it's not going to cause the, uh, the drum to, uh, to unwind or the crank to spin around and uh, possibly do damage to you. And we can vary the diameter of the drum. There's very little difference here. In fact, there's one hundred thousandths difference between the large and the small. Conversely, as I lower the weight, watch the string get wound onto the small drum and unwound from the large drum. Quite an ingenious device, as simple as it is. If you want a little math or formulas, and probably most of you don't, but there's all kinds of formulas that uh, can be applied to this. and. Uh, Typically, the, the distance uh, that the weight will move with one revolution of the crank is uh, this formula here. Distance equals pi times uh, the large radius minus the small radius. And uh, doing the math, you'll see that the distance of one crank is 157 thousandths. Well, that's about 5 30 seconds of an inch. This is a 5 30 seconds drill bit so you can see when I move this one turn that's pretty much right on the table there that I have raised at 530 seconds about that's not setting perfectly uh, plumb so I got a little problem there but that's how to determine the distance now we can also put on uh, and I made several different drums of different sizes. 
and I think I'll put this one on where you can see there's a big differential here between the large and the small so let me do that and uh, a couple minutes to, to change this on my little homemade uh, A-frame and we'll see uh, how that little formula applies to uh, this shall we sorry to you three-fourths of the world that uses the metric system but I'm using the Imperial uh, except of course for a uh, uh, 500 gram weight which is irrelevant for what I'm showing you right now but in this case now we're talking again about how much we're lifting per revolution of the crank here and the diameter here is inch and a quarter this is three quarters so the radius here for inch and a quarter is a uh, uh, five eighths and the radius is 0.375 so doing the math just like we did before using that formula you're going to see that one turn of the crank will uh, give me uh, 0.785 but let's call that three quarters of an inch so I'm going to turn the crank one revolution as such this is a three quarter bar so you can see that I've lifted it about three quarters of an inch with one revolution so you're going to lift uh, much faster when there is a big difference between the large and the small drum as opposed to the previous one where there was very little difference between the big and the small here's a picture out of an old book of the Chinese windlass also sometimes it's called the compound wheel but as you can see here by all of the different uh, designations here for lengths and diameters and radii and so on that uh, these numbers can be plugged into formulas to find uh, different aspects of, uh, of what this uh, windlass is all about. Let's take a look at one more picture. Here it is once again in this ancient cut and a big thanks to the Chinese who supposedly according to legend introduced this to this country during the gold mining era when they were forced to do some of the heavy labor and this reduced their efforts by some I would suppose just to illustrate something else although it's not very important now I've moved the string over so both the uh, uh, this strand and this strand are on the same diameter and when I do that and I crank it there is no movement of the weight or am I a champion of the obvious to tell you that by the way this is also sometimes simply called the Chinese wheel but this would be an excellent project for your children uh, to do in a science class or for a science project so get your kids in to watch this you might, they might find it interesting I'm not going to do the other formulas regarding uh, power and, and the weight and all that uh, suffice it that I showed you uh, about the distance because you're trading here uh, distance for uh, mechanical advantage or uh, I guess simply stated you can certainly change the length of the crank here or the distance from the crank which a crank is really nothing more than a lever with a, a handle on it let me do a close-up of the drum for you possibly I did not explain that uh, the string on the large drum is uh, wrapped in one direction and the string on the small drum is wrapped in the other direction so watch what's happening as I crank and right now I'm raising it I'm running out of string right there I'm now lowering it's really a rather neat phenomenon don't you agree and that concludes episode 6 of uh, what makes it work on the Chinese windlass or more generically called the differential windlass and be sure and watch the next video where I talk about the uh, chain hoist the differential chain hoist and on the differential chain hoist which holds about or will lift about a thousand pounds with very little effort there is also very little difference between the large sprocket and the small sprocket so it will be constructed
much more like this than like this. Here's hoping you like this. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Do nothing if you don't like it. And I'm hoping I'll see you in the next video. This is Tubal Cain.